friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on June 29th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Looking at the last 48 hours on our sun, quickly we saw the moon pass in front of SDO, also plasma filament eruption, and a couple sizable sunspots to watch. This is the last... 48 hours of imagery brought to you by SDO. Welcome back online. Observing the last 48 hours incoming. We do have a pretty sizable sunspot in the southern part of our sun as well. Plasma filament developing. Looking at outgoing imagery here. You can see the darker lines. Those are plasma filaments stretching out across the surface of the sun. Let's hope they stay stabilized. Amazing imagery here brought to you by SDO as well. Quickly forming sunspot there and a couple other regions to watch. Multi-spectrum showing a plasma filament taking off from the sun in the northern hemisphere right there. Tsunami incurred on the sun. That's right. That tsunami was probably about 10 Earths in width. As well, 171 angstroms showing the darker regions, which are coronal holes, getting ready for an Earth-facing position. As that does increase our solar wind speeds, in which we've been talking about a lot recently, and our magnetosphere. And I appreciate you all tuning in. Having a look at LASCO 2, and as well, Alaska has detected today another CME just going to give you a look at the last seven days of imagery. Our sun has been pretty active. A lot of B and C class solar flares. And then something just there. Space weather prediction is still not saying what that was. But it most likely was a plasma filament eruption from the southern parts of our sun. This is the last week of activity. Not missing any time, especially from that SDO. When it was down, it was not producing images. There were other places. But we seem to have all the imagery here the last seven days. But right here is our last 48 hours of imagery, 28th into the 29th. Pretty sizable CME taking off there, and as well another one twirling away in the outgoing position. Real-time solar winds were sitting at 460 kilometers per second, coming down slightly after being tested in the past 48 hours, 600 over 618 kilometers per second. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 28 down quite a bit from yesterday 27th we had a healthy spike to about 50 something but this is the latest telemetry for schumann resonance amplitude of 23 quality of 6.8 solar x-ray flux remains in b range right now we haven't seen much of any large solar flares the last little bit looking at NOAA space prediction spiral as ISWA is not showing right now. But definitely we do have a wave of energy coming our way from that blast that we saw on, La on LASCO. It looks like that'll be coming in around July 2nd and into the 4th. We'll start to see the effects on the 3rd for sure. Let's have a look at earthquakes here for the past 24 hours across the planet as we're sitting at about 280 earthquakes, according to USGS. We're going to start out here with the largest reported, which is pretty small compared to what we've seen in the past. South Sandwich Islands, 5.4 earthquake at 109 kilometer depth. South America, very quiet today, 4.5 here. Ecuador, Caribbean Plate. Sizable 4.2 reported there, as well as 4.3. Guatemala. 
Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge, 5.0 and a 4.8. 3.5, pretty rare earthquake here in Elgin, South Carolina. As well a 3.3 and a 2.7 here, Mentone, Texas. Minor earthquakes across California, notable here, 3.5, Petrolia. As well, notable minor earthquakes ensuing here in the Salton Sea. Nyland, California, Neeland. But not much of a swarm that we've seen in the past, but definitely an uptick. Other than that, no major swarms to talk about across California. It's been pretty quiet as of late, maybe a little too quiet. But I mean, as long as you're subscribed here to Daily Events Worldwide, we'll be keeping you aware and prepared. Let's carry on here with earthquakes, 3.7 and a 3.5 here, Pahala, Hawaii, seismicity is in increasing there, continuous minor seismicity through Alaska, 4.4 here, Russia, 80 kilometer depth, and then we get to our deepest earthquake today, 4.1 here, 444 kilometer depth, Bone and Islands, Japan, South Japan, as well as 4.4 there, Taiwan still seeing minor aftershocks after a sizable 6.2 there last week. 4.8 Myanmar, 4.6 Myanmar, they've seen a lot of moisture up in that area. 4.7 here, Tandona, Indonesia, as well as 4.6 the Philippines, 4.9 here, Papua New Guinea. But other than that, it's really quiet across the Australian plate up into New Zealand, Fiji. Normally, we see some deep earthquakes around there to kind of keep things regulated, but we'll see what happens here the next 24 hours. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well, the most recent volcanoes getting updated today. A couple of tropical cyclones to point out as well. We've got Sangay in Ecuador, Nevada de Chilean, Colombia. Reventador, Ecuador, Semeru, Indonesia, Sabancaya in Peru, Tocono in Indonesia, Fuego, Guatemala, and Krakatoa, Era in Japan. And so that's about 10 volcanoes getting updated today amongst the 49 that are active and erupting across the planet. We also have a trop potential tropical cyclone developing through Venezuela right now. It's going to be racing across the Colombian coastline, heading into parts of Nicaragua. In the long range, it's set to turn into possible Category 2 or 3 when it gets to southern parts of Mexico. They seem to be taking the same line right up through Acapulco right now. Very interesting jet stream, and we've been trying to keep an eye on things recently, especially the changes, because I have not seen weather acting like this for quite some time lots of moisture heading in through parts of eastern australia also got quite a bit few storms through southeast china asia through asia pacific we do have tropical depression number four who is set to head into parts of south china fires through the congo region and as well, gray day is still ahead of you for parts of northern Europe as those systems are coming in from the North Atlantic. Let's have a look at Venture Sky. Give a quick update on world weather. Overlooking North America, we've got a low pressure system heading through the prairies this week. Set to bring quite a bit of rain and possible tr uh, thunderstorm conditions. Especially when it gets over the Hudson Bay, you're going to see some really strong windy conditions. And then watch along the convergence lines here Friday for Ontario. Could see some potentially strong thunderstorms. Looking through the United States, lots of Gulf moisture coming in. And as well, Atlantic coast, right along the east coast of uh, Carolina, South Carolina. You've got a low pressure coming in there. And then other than that, daily evaporation rains, no major systems coming through over the next few days. But there is one here developing in the long range, Alberta Clipper heading southward. But 
high pressure is going to be the domination here over the next couple weeks. No major systems coming our way until next Tuesday after Canada Day long or long weekend celebrations. And then showing the forecast here for tropical systems through Mexico. You've got Celia who is now heading westwards into the Pacific. We've also got potential tropical cyclone here. Other than that, long range forecast does not show many Atlantic systems here developing, at least with Ventu Sky. Windy.com showing different forecast, but long range, we've still got something coming in through the Gulf. Huge high pressure ridge over the Atlantic. And no major systems coming to parts of Europe. Heavy rains through parts of Central Africa. And then watching some pretty strong systems heading into Southeast China this week. Of course, the potential typhoon here as well. We've got another one developing just east of that heading into the same region. So watch for these two lows to join forces through China and then up into Korean Peninsula for the long range. And then another system coming in behind that for June or July 8th. So, wow, lots of rain, monsoon systems affecting you guys. Thoughts and prayers to everybody. Hopefully, the Three Gorges can hold it all. Thanks very much for watching today. This has been Mike. Hope you enjoyed the Daily Do, keeping you aware and prepared to space weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, and weather. Much love. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.